when we start looking at data, we have measures of central tendency. And in particular, we're going to be looking at global descriptive metrics. Global means they describe the entire data set instead of individual features or enumeration units that we'll look at with clustering. Descriptive basically means that they describe the entire data set. And some of the metrics that we're going to look at today include mean, median, mode, and we'll look at the weighted average a little bit. We'll do this in both ArcGIS Pro as well as Excel for a set of data. In this example here, we've got counties, we're looking at hail, storms, and some other things, but if I right mouse click in the table of contents and click on open attribute table, I can see a number of the different metrics that we have here. We've got normalized data, non-normalized data. Typically with normalized data, it's going to be data that's going to display some type of uh, bell shape or histogram, and it's going to be situated about a mean where that non-normalized data will kind of take, take on a different composition. For the sake of argument right here, we're going to be looking at this column here, which represents median age. And median age is basically, for each of these counties, represent the age at which half the people are above that county, half the people are below that county. And so if I were to right mouse click and click on symbology, I can make a, a kind of a, we'll call it, you know, quick and dirty map right here, graduated symbols. Instead of looking at POP 2010, we'll go down here to median age. And so in North Carolina, we can see where the median age is higher versus lower here. Now we're going to look at some of these metrics here, and I have another tutorial on how to create histograms. But we're going to right mouse click, and we're going to click on statistics. So right mouse click on the field that you want to look at, and we've got statistics. And you can see we've got median age is the variable. We don't have any type of transformation. And we can see the mean which is 40.5 of these median, uh, median ages. The median of this number is 4.1. I'll have another tutorial where we talk about measures of dispersion, which is 4.5. And then we've got the min and the max, and from there we can calculate the range. We'll talk about that in another tutorial as well. And so we can see these data sitting right here for the mean, median, standard deviation so we can calculate things like z-scores or whatnot when we get into dispersion. Now another way that we can look at is we're looking at data in Excel. And here we're looking at income for the state of North Carolina. I've got the per capita income, median household income, population, and number of households at the uh, county level. We can run some simple join functions to, to map these but I'm working with these in Excel because I'm going to talk about ways that we can calculate this as well. I'm also looking at income for, say, uh, this is the state of North Dakota. And so you can see the 50-some counties here for North Dakota where we have median household income. And maybe we'll look at some measures in my next tutorial, measures of dispersion with those. And when we look, I look at the income right here, in the bottom right here, this is an Excel. This is just an Excel spreadsheet right here, so it's not connected to any points, lines, or polygons. And so I can run uh, a join function and you know map these if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do it in this case here. And you can see this is in dollars, but if I highlight all of these cells where we have median household income, you can see I in the bottom left here, I've kind of set it up with right mouse clicking, and then I can put what I want right there. I can highlight what I want to show. But I've got the average, the count, the min, the max, the sum. So if I do want to calculate these right here or look at these real quickly, I can. When we calculate things like z-scores and whatnot, it might be uh, it might behoove ourselves to actually calculate those. In addition with these data, I can do things like data and then sort. So I can sort these from highest to lowest. And so I can see my, my data has headers. These headers are going to be county, per capita income, median household income, population, and number of households. And so I can sort on these. And so I can sort on the county name, which will go from A to Z, alphabetize it. In this case, I'm going to sort on the median household income. I'm going to go from largest to smallest. And you'll see we're not going to include that first, uh, first record right here, you know, row one, because we said it has headers. And then we have Wake, Union, Camden, Chatham County, you know, 63,000 for the median household income, all the way down to the lowest over here, which is, uh, you know, Graham, Bertie, and Scotland, Robeson County, as we kind of work our way up from 100. And so I can kind of do some manipulations right here with the 
do some manipulations right here with the sorts and do some other things as well. But we also have some formulas available to us so that we can look at the mean, median, mode, standard deviation. And so the mean is basically the average of everything. So we have the average of every single county right here, and I can do this. And so I can calculate on the cell, and for, you know, for demonstration purposes, I'll put the word mean, median, and I don't think we're going to have a mode right here. That's the number that occurs the most. But I'm going to type in equal to sign. And in Excel, whenever I type in an equal to sign, it means that we're going to calculate a formula. So we've got a formula right here ready to go. So equal to, and then I've got a number of reserved keywords right here. So I'm going to just start typing in the word average, A-V-E-R-A-G-E. And then you can see what it says right here. It says returns the average arithmetic mean of its arguments, which can be numbers, names, arrays, references. Okay, so I'm going to click on average. And then you're going to see a parenthesis. This parenthesis is what we refer to as a parameter. It's expecting input values. And so it says number one, number two, number three. Number one, you see that it does not have a bracket there, means it's required. And then number two is going to be required. Number three, number four, that dot, dot, dot means that you can put in as many numbers as you want, but you need at least one input parameter. Now it's kind of silly to average just one number, but it lets you do that if you want to. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate this entire row. So what I'm going to do while this dialog is open is that I'm going to highlight every single every single row right here. And so now, and then I'll put the end of my function. And we know what functions are like f at x equals 2x plus 3. You know, that x is going to be in parentheses. So we can just plug in f at 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 3 or whatever we're looking at. And so we see c colon c2 colon c101. And so what we're looking at here is the 100 cells that go from cell C2 all the way down to cell C101. And I'm going to hit enter right here. And you can see I have a mean of 40,848. I'll do the same thing here equals median. And so we'll calculate the same exact median. Here. And you can see here that the mean and the median uh, are slightly different. So the mean is a little bit more. So you can imagine that there's going to be some higher values that kind of skew this a little to the right if we're thinking about this with a histogram. And then just for the heck of it, I'll type in the word mode and we'll see, see if there has anything. And I'm not sure we're going to have a mode right here because we got so many different values, but we'll try. And you can see 30,439. Okay, that's kind of interesting. We got two counties that appear the same. So this is the mode, 40,439. And if we actually look at these counties, we can see that the same exact number appears twice. It's kind of interesting. So we've got the mean, median, mode. So we can calculate these using both Excel, uh, ArcGIS Pro, where we have the mean, and we can look at the properties of this as well that we showed using statistics or we can calculate this using Excel. Now, the one challenge about this is that I just averaged up every single county. Now, some counties are going to contribute more to the median household income as opposed to other counties. It's not really for, fair for me to average up this 63,000 and 61,000 when the 61,000 only has a population of 9,980, while this one has 100 times that but they're both being counted the same when we calculate the mean. And so we have something here called a weighted average. Now we see weighted averages all the time. Here are your grades right here. This is what, you know, these are some of the grades that you earned last semester, where that A is a four, a B is a three, a C is a two, and a D is a one. Now what, we're, what, would, be, what would happen if we were to just average up all those values, you'd see down at the bottom, you've got an average of 2.67. Is that really your GPA? No. Why not? Because, well, this D was only a one-credit gym class, while the A was a four-credit lab. 
And so these A's, B's, C's, and unfortunately D's shouldn't count the same towards each other. And so what we have something here is called quality, they call them at school quality points, where that we do what? We weight these. So for B2 times the credits. And so we call these at school quality points. And all it is is just going to be the product of the grade times the number of credits. Now, what do we do here? We add up all the quality points, and then we divide by the total number of credits. So now we have a new function here. Okay, I want to go and add all these up. This thing is called the sum. And so you can see right here we have 15 credits. So I can type in the equal to sign. We got the sum of what? All of these. Now, when we calculate our GPA, what are we going to do? We're going to add all these up and divide by this number. So now I can equals the sum of what? These quality points divided by this number. And so now you actually have a 3.0. And if I were to change this, if you know if this thing happened to be two credits instead, you got a 2.875, but you know, we can go through and do some of these different scenarios. So down here in the bottom left, this is your GPA. Now there's a number of different ways we can do this. We have this new column here called quality points, where we divide by the total number of credits. But in addition, you know, one of the other calculations we can do, essentially all it's going to be when we calculate it or we extend this um, sigma notation is that it's going to be 4 times 4 over 16 times 3 plus 3 times 3 over 15 plus 3 times 3 over 15. So all we're basically doing is weighting these based on the percentage of total credits that contribute to this grade. So this one only counts as 1 15th of your total grade, while this four, while this four counts as 4 15th, almost a quarter of your entire grade, where these three credits only count as 1 5th of your entire grade. Okay, so we've got these four credits, three credits, three credits, two, two, one. And so these fours are contribute, going to contribute a lot more than these. Now it's fairly easy to calculate these using this. Now let's try calculating the weighting mean for this. Now think about what we just calculated. We calculated, and let's forget about these two columns here. We're working solely with median household income. The only thing that we care about here is population is, we can kind of think of this as the number of credits. And so we'll kind of type in the word quality points right here. We'll make it highlighted. And so this column basically means equals this number times this number, which is equal to this. So this big number, 56, you know, we don't even want 56 billion. I'm going to drag all these down. So what did we do here? This is a little bit more complex where we kind of think of this as our grade. This is a number of credits. And so we multiplied the grade times the number of credits, and then what do we do? Divided by the total number of credits. The total number of credits. And so I'm going to create a new column here called weighted average. And if we can put into words, what is it? This is going to be equal to the sum of my population, or I'm sorry, the sum of our quality points divided by the sum of my population. Now what kind of number should we get? Before I hit this enter button, what kind of number should I get? Is it going to be more than 63,000? No. It's going to be somewhere between the highest and the lowest, for sure, all right? And so we, we want to make sure we've got a number that kind of makes sense right there, okay? So we make sure we have our correct calculation because we can go hand calculate our GPA. This thing's going to be a little bit more difficult. So when I click Enter here, I've got 46,486. 
46,486. And now we can see the weighted average is really a lot higher than the mean or the median. Now, why? Okay, when we look at this and we kind of think about why, well, we've got a high population county at 63,000, a high population county at, uh, for Mecklenburg County. And if I were to kind of just go down here and drag down here and look at the total population, the sum is about 900,000, 919,000. And so you can see that this 63,000 is going to contribute almost 10% of to the weighted average. This high 919,000 is 10% of the total population of North Carolina, and its contribution is well above the mean. So you can see it's going to be skewing these way above our arithmetic mean that we calculated before and the median as well. And now when we look down towards the bottom, we see Graham County, which is contributes very, very little to the total population, like literally like less than a thousandth, a thousandth of it. Okay, so when we think of this GPA, GPA instead of like, one credit, we're thinking of like 0.1 credits or 0.01 credits we're looking at of its contribution to the entire to the, in, in, the entire weighted average. So in summary, we've got a couple of different calculations that we've looked at. In ArcGIS Pro, we can right mouse click on any attribute and then look at the statistics and then it's got a nice histogram that we can export out. But in Excel, we've got calculations called average median, mode, and then you can see we went through the trouble of calculating the weighted average and we looked at a scenario where the weighted average kind of skewed it well above the mean and the median, those other measures of central tendency, based on how much those high population counties contributed to the weighted average. And we kind of align those with an example based on GPA.